Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Edison TV. I'm Pui Hamami, healthcare analyst at Edison. And with me today is James Graham, the CEO of Recce Pharmaceuticals. Thank you very much for joining us today, James. And we look forward to this timely update on recent developments at the company. I like good to be with you. Excellent. So first, please remind us of the widespread and growing, growing problem of antimicrobial drug resistance. And as a follow-up, how Recce's new class of synthetic anti-infectives and lead candidate R327 in particular can potentially help address this global challenge. Yes, look, antibiotic resistance is described as one of the greatest threats to human health today. I mean, gone are the days where you take one course of antibiotics to overcome uh, the infection. Now, when you go to the doctor, they say take that course plus mul multiple follow-on repeats just to overcome that existing infection. And the reason for that is the drugs no longer work. You know, the antibiotic pipeline has never been drier, but that need has never been greater. In fact, antibiotic resistance is directly responsible for around three to four million deaths uh, each year. And then, of course, the pharma economic cost, when we look to just the category of septicemia, which is bacterial blood poisoning, it costs uh, in US dollars 170 million US dollars per day for just that category. So, it's a major unmet medical need across a variety of um, indications. You asked the question, how uh, is Recce positioned to tackle that? Recce is very well positioned as according to um, World Health Organization, we are clinically the most advanced new class of anti-infectives or antibiotics in the world at this time. And we're the only one with a very unique mechanism of action that's able to stop the ATP synthesis or the beating heart of the bacteria itself. We also stop the Z-ring uh, cell uh, division and complex. But why does it work? It's synthetic. Uh, we're attracted to the bacteria. We're attracted to all bacteria. And we shut down the bacteria faster than any other antibiotic known to date. And we work broader than any other antibiotic known to date. And why that's important is if you look to an infection, you don't know, or the doc clinician doesn't know what that infection is. Our compound works against all infections. So the time-consuming diagnostics or the clinical misses of trying different antibiotics could really be a thing of the past. Apply recce, apply quickly with confidence that it will overcome the bacterial infection present. Okay. Now, since we last spoke, <clears throat> the company has made some notable progress. Namely, Recce has, has reported some positive interim data in its phase two acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections clinical trial in Australia and New Zealand. Can you please summarize what kind of efficacy data has been reported thus far? And in terms of what sort of skin conditions the R327 topical gel has been able to show and effectively treat thus far? Yes, yeah, so we announced initially that we had passed the halfway point. We've now um, passed the three quarter way point, but the data released on the halfway point demonstrated a 100% clinical response. What that means is basically, uh, I don't know, a third or a half of the patients were cured of their infection and the rest had a meaningful improvement in their um, infection or in their wound uh, as a result of treatment over a 14-day period. What indications were we treating? Pardon me, ABSSI is acute bacterial skin structure infections, which is topical infections in totality. So we had um, skin structure infections, we had scratch infections, we had eczema infections, uh, we had puncture infections, post-operative wound infections, diabetic ulcer infections. Really, the gamut of infections, when you're looking to this novel gel applied to the area of an infected wound, had a complete clinical response. So we were thrilled by that and we're on track to complete that clinical study uh, within this calendar year. Okay. So... Um... How has the R327 safety and tolerability been thus far in this and other clinical trials? The, the toler safety and tolerability profile is excellent. Uh, certainly in this study, there's been uh, no notable adverse effects or no serious adverse effects. Uh, and when we look to a more invasive method of administration, systemic administration, which is, of course, IV straight into human vein, uh, we've dosed ooh, some 130, 140 people with a fast infusion in high concentrations up to and including 6,000 milligrams over a one-hour period. And we've gone as little as 15 minutes, so really, really quick. Um, there was no noticeable adverse effects, and, and that is extraordinary with any drug, let alone a, a new, new novel chemical entity. 
Mm-hmm. Now, if this AB triple SI study results are positive, I believe the company is guiding that the next step would be a phase three study in Australia and New Zealand for the topical gel. Now, would a U.S. study still be a possibility? And related to this, what's the current status and timing for the filing of a U.S. investigation on your drug application for topical and IV R327? Yeah, so on the topical, we're completing the phase two study at this moment. As I mentioned, it's on track to be completed within this calendar year. Uh, We'll package that uh, data up for two purposes. One purpose is to launch a phase three study across Australia and New Zealand, uh, which would probably start or call it around uh, the end of first quarter of next year. Uh, That study would run for approximately 12 months, uh, and it would be done to a regulatory standard applicable to the US FDA. In parallel to that, the data from the phase two and obviously phase one and all the surrounding data uh, will be packaged up and we will have an IND meeting uh, with the uh, US FDA. The IV data, we've done a a phase one, a phase 1B, 2A, if you call it, because there was an efficacy component to that, uh, is being packaged up at this moment. So that that will be uh, submitted probably in parallel as part of the collective discussion with the FDA on this new compound. Okay. And now very recently, the company has reported that it has received Human Research Ethics Committee clearance to start a phase three study, a registrational study for topical R327 for diabetic foot infections in Indonesia. Should we expect that study to start in the coming weeks then? Look, I would certainly say in the coming weeks or in the very near month. Uh, It's close enough in in particulars, but certainly from an advancement you know, Indonesia, a, po- a population of 280 million people and 11% have diabetes. If you have diabetes, 34% get an ulcer and about 90% of those get infected. And we know there's it's an unmet medical need, not serviced by existing treatments. So the patient population is enormous. Uh, to my knowledge, it's the, the largest or certainly the most significant um, diabetic foot infection study in the world at this time. And if you're approved in Indonesia, you're approved uh, from a data uh, recognition context across the ASEAN. So you go to a population of about 680 million people. And then, of course, there's potential pull across uh, into the Middle East, potentially the UK and South America as well. So the registration study, which is this phase three study, is significant to the company. Uh, and brings forward the revenue opportunities uh, that that um, that we look forward to. Okay, so I think you had mentioned this is the largest DFI study in the world. So, what would does the expect the number of subjects to be recruited, and how long should, should we expect the treatment duration to be? Uh, and what would be the primary endpoint of the study? Of course. So, thankfully, the patient um, population is significant there. So, access to patients is uh, readily available. Uh, the study itself runs uh, across 300 persons, 200 receive the topical gel, 100 uh, receive a placebo. Uh, they're dosed uh, daily for 14 days, and the study is expected to run uh, over 12 months. Uh, we have a fast-track regulatory status with the regulator there, so some near months after the completion of that study would be a time where one could, assuming success, um, potentially receive market approval to to, to be selling. Um, there will be uh, an interim data point or possibly interim data points through that study um, and certainly the indications, if anything like we've seen with our AB triple SI and our special access scheme patient dosing uh, plus our burn wound dosing and similar, it, it should work. We're looking forward to that. And certainly when you think of a superiority study against, you know, using a silver or, you know, some kind of, simple dressing as they currently use, it's pretty easy to outcompete. Okay. And so now with this phase three study, will it have a significant effect on the company's burn rates? No, no. So we announced the study itself uh, due to it being highly subsidized uh, by both the Indonesian and the Australian governments. Uh, and in fact, there's uh, the potential of a, a license with a uh, leading in, uh, Indonesian pharmaceutical company that the study costs us or I think it was around two and a half million US dollars. Furthermore, one better part is we actually receive 43 and a half cents R&D rebate on that expenditure. So the actual cash impact is, I don't know, a couple of million dollars, if that, very, very inexpensive. So uh, for what it's worth, we actually announced a successful R&D rebate yesterday of $6.75 million. So we've got a good track record of receiving them. It doesn't greatly impact our cash burn. 
but certainly it brings forward the revenue opportunities associated with that study. And I believe it's in 2026, is that correct, that you, that you, you potentially get to commercialize the product? We would expect to con- uh, conclude the study in late 2025. So yes, uh, first half 2026 would be uh, a commercial pro- uh, possibility. Um, we've already started uh, talking with the um, health ministry. I've got some great photos with the uh, health minister. In fact, Minister Booty is a very nice fellow uh, and leading hospitals there with the potential to to early sales. Okay. Now, for the uh, also going on to the intravenous formulation of R327, the lead indication has been sepsis and complex urinary tract infections. What are the next steps for IV R327's clinical development in these areas of critical unmet medical need? Yeah, so that compound, uh, when we look to the US FDA, uh, to my knowledge, has the only qualified infectious disease designation for bacteriemia. Bacteriemia is a a very fancy word for broad-spectrum sepsis. Uh, We've, uh, through our studies, identified that our compound um, has some 20-fold higher um, concentration in the human bladder when it goes from the blood through the kidneys into the urinary tract system and in the bladder. And what that means is it sets us up the potential as a urinary tract uh, compound or a uroseptic uh, drug. 30% of patients who get sepsis, bacterial blood poisoning, have an underlying UTI. So the potential to be uh, administered quickly on first patient presentation to overcome the infection or to treat an existing infection, including the underlying um, cause of that infection, is significant. So we are packaging up the data, uh, having dosed some 130, 140 people in our IV studies. Uh, they're systemic, obviously, at those studies. Uh, we would be able to make a next um, definitive move on on uh, that clinical development. Okay. And uh, you, the company has also recently announced that it received the $3 million from the United States Department of Defense to develop R327 for burn wounds and for potentially for some point of injury settings. What sort of activities will the company be working as part of this grant and what are some of the milestones to look forward to? Yes, look, it's quite extraordinary. Uh, I can't say I've seen too often a U.S. government provider, an overseas foreign entity, Australia in our instance, um, taxpayer money effectively. So we were thrilled to receive the uh, three million Australian dollars uh, from the U.S. Department of Defense. That program is a U.S. Army program uh, focused upon burn wounds. Uh, We have studies running with the U.S. Army in that area at this moment. Uh, I'm not permitted to to share the detail of them, obviously, because of the nature of defence and similar, but I can say they are running, and I I do very much look forward to sharing what I can when I can, and uh, we we thank the U.S. government for that opportunity. Absolutely. And what you mentioned, there was the R&D grant that was just received yesterday, and with that in mind, what do you estimate the company's current cash runway and what are some of the strategies that you're looking at to continue to support the advancement of R327 and the promising infection indications that we've discussed thus far? Yeah, so we announced at the end of our last quarterly, I think it was around $6 million Australian dollars cash at bank. Uh, we've obviously significantly um, increased that through the uh, recent, by way of yesterday, uh, R&D rebate from the Australian government Uh, The R&D rebate scheme where we get 43.5 cents on every dollar we uh, spend, that's R&D applicable. Uh, In our case, not only from in Australia, but anywhere around the world, really creates the ability not only to to draw down on that um, credit when it's accrued, but to potentially draw down on that credit um, in a future context because we have a government-backed guarantee for a period of about three years to a quantum of around $55 million. So, What does that mean? Look, I think um, in a non-dilutionary cash setting, we could see uh, a positive increase in our our cash balance uh, in line with our R&D activities there. Okay. So in closing, with a lot of different exciting opportunities, what are some of the key milestones and catalysts for Recce that we should expect to hear from over the next 12 to 24 months? This is the this is the year of efficacy. Uh, we look to the topical programs um, most particularly uh, because of their focus on efficacy. So we see the AB Triple SI or the Acute Bacterial Skin Structure Topical Infection Program uh, completing uh, approximately a month from today. Uh, certainly within this calendar year, I'm really looking forward to the data that follow that flows from that. Uh, having a 100% uh, response rate in the preliminary data. Uh, If we can extend that by way of the study itself, you have an incredibly powerful data package to submit to the FDA, but also to to 
uh, assist with the um, potential commercialization of the AB Triple SI study. Uh, sorry, not the AB Triple SI, the DFI study happening in Indonesia. Whether it be topical for diabetic wounds, topical for AB Triple SI wounds, or topical for burn wounds, um, we have multiple data readouts coming from that. The IV study, of course, we look forward to um, completing the data review of that. Systemic data is complex data and it takes a little bit of time to do, uh, but we would obviously set ourselves up to launch the next stage of that program. So really, I, I see we have multiple clinical indications, we have multiple programs, and we have the upside opportunities uh, coming from those programs, one focused upon ASEAN, one focused upon the US FDA, uh, but both running in parallel that, that we really look forward to over the, the coming coming months. That's excellent. And so so thank you very much for joining us today, James. And we re really look forward to catching up with you soon and on the future developments and progress of the company. Thank you again. Many thanks.